So this is going to be real quick. I just wanted to show this. Um, if you're following along on the project, you'll kind of get the context of this. If you're just finding this, uh, you know, later at a later date or something like that, uh, you know, it may seem a little odd. But working on the Impala LT1 here. Uh, moving on to uh, fuel pressure regulator and the uh, stock fuel rails. They are um, more than adequate from what everybody says, so I'm keeping those. The uh, setup back here though, right in this region, this is your stock fuel pressure regulator and it goes pretty much, let me get you a good view of this here, it goes pretty much right in that little hole there in the rail and then it gets bolted there. And I'm just kind of showing you this so it makes sense. And then this little guy right there, uh, goes in there and is held on with this clip. Now what I'm doing is, um, you know, on this build I'm trying to replace for everything I need to, everything that uh, is suspect, old, I mean 180,000 miles, you never know. So what I have here, this is an Aeromotive uh, 13107 fuel pressure regulator. Pretty nice piece. Um, still has the vacuum connection, bolts up to the factory location. Um, they do say that uh, it could uh, take some shims if necessary, but you adjust it by that top uh, screw there. Has all the correct hookups, everything like that. There's even like a provision, looks like if you want to put a gauge on it. Um, so yeah, you know, lots of uh, lots of you know different ways this will work for you but definitely meant for the LT1 I'm going to uh, work on installing it here and uh, show you kind of what the finished product looks like on this fuel rail but a little quick update wanted to show uh, this part and what it actually does here alright so it looks like I have a little bit of a mess here that's okay um, stock regulator pretty much done that was interesting there's a screen type thing in there uh, my new one doesn't have that that's the stalker. You know, done a good job though. Okay, so, anyways, right here, if you notice, I'll kind of roll by there. You see that space right in there? They give you these two shims to uh, fill that gap. And when I put it kind of up, it looks like one of them is going to be necessary to. Uh, take up that uh, space right there so I'm gonna do that the other thing if you notice I reach up here and grab this guy this is the uh, line clamp it kinda goes under here catches the line and through that hole right there it it screws up in well the problem is this new one sticks out past where this is gonna be so let me kinda demonstrate I'll give you a little layout here it would be like that and it's way outside there so they give you this thing one of these uh, rubber guys to uh, you drill a hole in here catch it with this little clamp and they even give you a self tapping screw so I have to drill a hole into that little guy right there this still goes on here to hold I don't know I guess that line right there yeah and um, gotta put the shim in drill the hole self tapping screw should be good. They also give you some uh, extra vacuum hose if you need to extend that, a little uh, joiner there if you need to, because this does change the location. I mean, the original vacuum port would have been, you know, more like up here, because there it is on there. So if we put them side by side, I mean, it is a crazy different size. So um, if you if it gets thrown off that much, they give you an extender piece and a little junction in there, if you can see that. That's the uh, Aeromotive uh, 13107. Um, not an endorsement or anything, it's just kind of what they had at Summit. Um, you know, I'll endorse it and say it's awesome when it works really good, but you know, right now it's just one of those looks like a nice part and fingers crossed it does its job. I'm going to have to adjust the uh, fuel pressure once we get this going here. Uh, Golan, who did the engine, says to basically kind of power tune it, crank it up, see if it. Uh, feels any better and you know go from there give baseline pressures that sort of thing I gotta confirm the numbers but 
um, you know, I got to get one of those uh, a gauge that hooks onto the uh, little valve right here, the, the Schrader valve as they're called, and then I can kind of test all that out when we get it started here. So, thanks for watching. Um, Hoagiesgarage.com is where everything's located for that LT1 build. Um, if you are new to this, uh, you can subscribe. We have a contest going on. It is the beginning of August and it's still open. It's called the Subscriber Contest Video. Impala is looking to be driven in the month of September, though. That's the tentative plan, fingers crossed. Thanks a lot. See you next time.